the game to see the boxing boys. Welcome back, gang, for the first time and hopefully many more to come. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notifications right here, this little bell, so you can get those emails every time we go. Hello, everyone. We're here with Max Kellerman. Thanks for uh, taking the time to get a one quick one-on-one. -on -one. Um, just wanted to get your opinion um, about pretty much the Amir Khan and Terrence Crawford. Um, who do you think is going to win? Are you? I don't. I, I'm not. I don't predict the fight because I'm working the fight yeah. and um, you know I want to make clear I don't have a rooting interest in the fight. I think that Terence Crawford is properly the favorite because he is considered correctly one of the two best pound for pound fighters in the world if not the best pound for pound fighter in the world um, and he's in his prime uh, and, and Amir Khan is considered I think correctly an excellent fighter who's very athletic um, uh, fast, skillful, but with certain flaws in his skills, in his in in the kind of integration of his offense and his defense, where he leaves himself open to be hit cleanly, and so when you add that up, you have an A or A plus fighter against at this point in his career, I think you could peg Amir Khan like a B plus fighter, meaning he'll beat most guys, but the elite have given him problems. Like the elite give everyone problems. Um, I think the best version of Amir Khan looked like an A fighter, in the sense that, you know, I mentioned Zab Judah and Pauli Malinaji. Those are good boxers, you know, and and in the middle of the ring, Amir at his best was able to hit them with three punch combinations upstairs. Very difficult to do to a guy in a in a responsible defensive position in the middle of the ring. How do you hit him with three shots upstairs in a combination? But uh, Amir had that kind of skill, like like he's hitting a floor to ceiling bag. Um, if that version of Amir Khan shows up, he can give anyone a hard time. Now, um, with Terrence Crawford fighting Amir Khan, um, people have kind of criticized Terrence Crawford's resume. Um, does this fight itself help um, the naysayers that say Terrence Crawford doesn't have a, a resume? I, no, probably not because what the, the feeling that boxing fans get about who's fighting the tough fights is not so much just how good are the fighters, because Floyd fought some very good fighters and was sometimes criticized for it. The feeling that fans get about whether a guy has a good enough resume or a good resume or is the kind of guy that you can root for because you don't feel like he's being fed setups is the kind of guy who fights other fighters where the risk outweighs the reward, or at least it's kind of similar. And I think in this case, Amir or, or, or the, the risk outweighs the name. And in Amir Khan's case, the sense in boxing is that he's a good fighter, but he'll probably lose. And this is the biggest money fight that could be made, given the circumstances. Not that Terrence Crawford's the kind of guy who you want to avoid opponents with. Terrence Crawford's the kind of guy, it's just the opposite, that you'll fight anyone with if you're the promoter or manager, because you think your guy should be the favorite against anyone. But the best available guy with the biggest name is considered to be a guy whose name at this point in his career is bigger than the threat he poses. So I probably won't help Crawford in the, in the way that you mean with boxing fans. But a win against Amir Khan at, at this point in his career is still a good win. I mean, when last seen in a high profile fight, he was boxing well, at least early, against the guy who's presently the middleweight champion of the world before he got caught. So yeah, people know Amir can fight. Um, and, and then just say, you know, Terrence Crawford's opposition's all on the, they say the other side of the street. Um, you know, last question, uh, you know, there's Errol Spence, uh, um, Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, Keith Thurman. What does Terrence Crawford need to do to get a fight with those guys? Um, presumably the fact that... You know, it's funny because I know what you mean. Because as I mentioned, boxing is siloed right now. Promoters affiliated with certain networks kind of trying to create their own universes at those networks. Um, but I think what Bob Arum said was right. If the money is there, if the event is big enough, the fight finds a way of happening. It doesn't mean 100% of the time. There are fights that didn't happen because of networks and promoters and such. But real super fights can't be promoted into existence. Real super fights get made because the dust settles and there are two guys left standing. And, and when that happens, it's tough to keep those guys apart. The biggest disappointment of the previous era is that Mayweather and Pacquiao didn't get together when the dust had settled and those were the two guys left standing. They didn't get together till years after the expiration date. So the result was disappointing in terms of the action produced in the ring. Of course, it also sent a bad message, I think, to fighters and promoters and networks, which is let, the let all this pent up demand 
Like the reason that fight did four million plus pay-per-view was because there was enormous pent-up demand. But by the time, but you know what I think the, the what people have to take away from that though is not wait till past the expiration date to see if the demand can go even higher because then what winds up happening is a disappointing product which probably turns fans off from boxing. The idea is you wait until the demand builds up to till everyone can make out. <laughs> And you can overcome network differences or whatever else, promotional, and make the event happen. And hopefully make it happen at a point where the result, the product that the fans are getting, have them wanting to come back for more. Is that a, more like a business thing, would you say? Because, like, you know, Terrence is on his own on top rank and everyone else. It's like, these, why things are, I... these things are usually structural. So in order to come, overcome structural um, uh, uh, features that stop things from happening or result in less than optimal outcomes or sub you know, like not great outcomes, it takes some kind of intelligence to say, okay, wait a minute, rather than just react to the marketplace, which is very good at allocating resources in the short term, right? Rather than just reacting to the marketplace, which is how we get energy policy in this country, which is backwards, right? You need some kind of, uh, of intelligence seeing a little bit further horizons and saying, yes, the market is reacting this way now, but if we plan a little bit, we can, we can have the market work for us instead of at times against us. Thank you so much. Uh, could you give us uh, your social media for your fans? Max underscore Kellerman, Twitter and, uh, and uh, uh, Instagram, oh, yeah. both. You got an Instagram and a Facebook I now. just got on Instagram. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. What man. is up, TBV family? Yes, yes, YouTube has been cutting funding to uh, their channels as of late and with net neutrality uh, going through its process. The internet is changing. If you want to keep your favorite channel intact, coming up with tons of content, and plus get hours and hours of extra content, head over to patreon.com forward slash the boxing voice uh, to become a member of the TBV family and help support the channel. Peace.